Howdy folks. So what you're looking at here is a hybrid power audio amplifier module. Um, basically uh, this is a power amplifier in a block and uh, these are very common um, because they're, I mean, they're relatively cheap and they're very effective. Um, you just uh, supply some support circuitry to them and uh, bam, you've got a power amplifier. And uh, anyway, uh, this, uh, this amplifier actually, the, uh, the chip actually failed and this is actually a replacement that I've added and uh, I have a video that is either already up or will be coming up within the next week or so. I'm not quite sure how this is going to work out, but um, anyway, you will see a video on repairing this amplifier, but anyway, in part of that repair, I had to replace this um, this module. So I thought I would take a look at the old module. So I took the old module, and uh, after quite a bit of uh, percussive maintenance involving a Dremel and um, uh, some pliers, I actually was able to open it. Um, now I actually half expected this to be potted, um, such that it was basically encased in, in molten uh, you know, epoxy or plastic or some sort of potting material. Um, but actually, no, it's just free air. So we can actually take a look in this. And these things, as you can kind of tell, they're, uh, they're, I can't get any closer with this camera, um, but they're really uh, quite interesting inside because they don't bother to encapsulate the actual silicon dyes in anything. So they're all bare, and we can actually take a look at the circuit and see the components, how they're mounted in here. Um, so I'm going to get my microscope out, and uh, I'm actually going to go through this, um, take a look at what's in here, uh, potentially see how it works, but also um, see if I can find uh, exactly what died in here, because this amplifier module was um, it was passing the input voltage, which is about plus and minus 50 volts. Uh, it was passing that to the input, um, so it's uh, it's it's definitely got some serious serious seriously wrong stuff in it. So um, I want to see if I can actually visually see that with a microscope. So um, yeah, I think that that's enough for this camera because that's about as uh, as close as I can get. But it is quite pretty, um, you mu I must say. So anyway, let me change cameras and I'll be right back. So I apologize for the quality of this video, but um, my I can't really use my proper optical microscope for this, so I have to use this USB microscope, which only has a VGA resolution. So uh, I apologize, this isn't HD or even particularly good frame rate, but uh, it's the best and easiest thing that I have to get this uh, this on camera. So uh, anyway, I can go to two different magnifications, but I'm going to do an overview at a much, much lower magnification, only about 20 times or so. Um, so you can see uh, this is the upper left-hand corner of the package, and you can sort of see my Dremel work here. And the way that this actually, the way that this device works is basically this, um, there's a metal back and there's a circuit board uh, that is basically, basically it's, it's, it's a metalized circuit board on the back and that's done for heat dissipation so that you can get the heat out of the devices on this. So um, I, I could have technically removed the board um, from this black plastic uh, enclosure but it's glued on there. You can see there's really good glue around the edge and uh, I was risking cracking it so I decided to, to not bother. Um, so a hybrid module is basically a mix of um, bare die semiconductors and um, as well as surface mount components. So for example, there is a surface mount resistor um, on this and you can see traces just like on a circuit board. But what you're looking at in the middle is actually a semiconductor. Um, now it has, in this case, three, um, three terminals. It has two bond wires going to it. Uh, and then the actual uh, bottom of the device uh, is another terminal. So this is most likely a, a transistor, um, probably a bipolar transistor or a uh, MOSFET. Um, I don't particularly know this circuit. Now I may or may not be able to get close enough to it to focus at a higher magnification. And just because this is on the edge, um, yeah, so unfortunately no, I can't. I can't zoom in very close to that particular device, but there are other devices exactly like it that I will get much closer to, and you can see more detail. Um, you can see that this this board uh, is definitely shiny, so it's definitely uh, definitely got um, residue on it. It's not conformally coated; that's just flux residue um, that's left on the board. That's what makes it look kind of shiny and 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 wet, but it's not wet. 
Um, so we have many, many devices here. This is the idea behind the hybrid is that um, you know you can put a bunch of uh, devices all together in one in one package. So these devices here, for example, um, they only have one bond wire plus the the body. So these would be, uh, in my my guess, they would be diodes. Um, in that situation, in the, there there's a, probably a capacitor. Um, could be an inductor, but it's probably a capacitor. Um, resistor, more capacitor, a much larger device. And we also have these things, which are massive devices. And if I just sort of move out a bit here, just to give you a bit of context. So that was sort of what we were looking at before. And there's this, there are these um, very, very large uh, devices. And uh, these are, basically these are power devices of some kind. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll sort of I'll sort of give you more of an overview. This is obviously another transistor, and that is obviously another diode of some kind. Uh, but these are designed for obviously much higher power. Um, again, more transistors, resistors. Another large transistor here. Um, another transistor, probably a diode. And of course, as you saw in the overview shot, there are these four really big devices here, and these would be the main. Um, push-pull output transistors. So these are most, these are probably bipolar transistors, mostly BJTs, and the way that I would assume that they are doing this, uh, because this is a class H amplifier module, it's basically a modified version of class AB. So there is basically an NPN and a PNP doing a push-pull for each channel. Uh, and since this is a stereo chip, um, that would be, you know, push channel A, pull channel A, push channel B, pull channel B. That's how they would do this. Um, and the damage that you see on uh, on this particular one uh, is due to, um, that damage there is due to my Dremel. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I'm surprised I didn't cut any further into it. Um, but anyway, so that's what those four devices are. And I'll, I'll get closer to those in just a moment. Um, again, just sort of all general stuff. You can see there's some links here. Um, that are just jumping from one place to the other. But uh, there are no, as far as I know, there aren't any, um, there's no digital logic in this at all. It's all just, uh, it's all just analog uh, transistors and diodes pretty much. Um, there's, there's, I don't think there's any more complicated components in this. So if I uh, zoom in a bit closer, to this uh, this transistor. Now, I am not a silicon expert by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I do not design silicon, so I I can't be uh, one hundred percent certain what I'm looking at. Um, I mean, I'm not an electrical engineer. I don't really know what's going on here, but uh, it's cool nonetheless. Um, and I wonder if I can get close enough to these these high up devices. Yes, I can. Um, but I'm not entirely sure what you're going to see because it's just the face of the, uh, the semiconductor die. And I don't exactly know how this is done. So that would be the bond wire. I mean, that's an incredibly fine wire. Um, it, I mean, we're, we're probably at, I would say probably 300 times to 400 times magnification. Um, just comparing to what I can see on my optical microscope, um, that, that's, that's what I guess. So, um, yeah, that, that just gives you an idea for scale here. Um, let's find a, um, a small die that's in the middle that I can actually get a, a, a nice close up of, uh, like this device here. Hopefully I can get close enough to this. The one thing with this microscope is it's it's uh, very very bad when it comes to uh, how close you have to be to see things. Oh, this is uh, quite disappointing. I may actually not be able to get much closer for that. So here we have another div small die. Another oh, now take a look at this die. Now. 
I can see two things that are clearly wrong with this. The first one is that bond wire on the right there, it's not going to anything. It's just free floating. So that bond wire has broken off of that die, and you can see that that die is brown. It's got a burn mark on it. So that is definitely one of the things that failed in this module. Um, that, that transistor emitted the magic smoke, and uh, it was obviously violent enough to blow that leg completely off. And I'm very disappointed that this thing uh, will not focus close enough. I, I unfortunately, just because of the location, I cannot get any, I can't get the microscope physically close enough to it um, to get in, to get any you know any more decent magnification than this, um, but yeah, so that's okay. So that's at least one bad device. I wonder what else there is. I apologize for how shaky this is and everything. It's very difficult. I mean, at this kind of magnification, I'm doing this by hand, so it's uh, every, even the slightest movement it translates to you know, a, a large change in the, uh, the, field, the uh, field of view, so. I don't, I don't see any other devices that are immediately obvious that have the same kind of skid mark in them. A device, I'm not sure what's going on in the lower right-hand corner of that that metal pad. That might, that might just be how it was manufactured though. There may not actually be a problem there. I just had an idea. I might actually scan across this and try and stitch the photos together so if you see a, a pop-in in the video right now it's uh, because I tried that, tried that, so um, I'm not sure how well that'll go. But yeah, that's that's what's in one of these modules. Um, they are definitely quite cool, um, and I'm kind of glad that this was not potted. Because otherwise, I would not uh, would be able to see this. So I can clearly see one thing that completely shit the bed, and it's uh, it's the device right in the middle there. Um, so it's obviously part of maybe like the input stage pre preamp something like that. Um, there's probably more stuff that's wrong in here, um, but it's just not stuff that's visible. So I've managed to uh, kind of modify my microscope a bit by removing the front to get it in physically, get the lens physically closer uh, to the actual devices in the module. Uh, and it seems to be working. So this is obviously a transistor. Much That's one of the smallest devices actually on this, uh, on this module. So let me try and uh, find, uh, yeah, so right here, this is actually the, uh, the mod, the uh, transistor that has obviously, um, you know, blown itself up, and you can see the bond wire, how it's it's actually physically sproined up. It's actually in a different focal plane than the uh, the actual transistor die, and you just you can't see any features at all. It's just a giant skid mark. So that thing has uh, clearly uh, failed catastrophically, uh, you know, compared to probably something like what it looked like originally. See if I can find one of the one of the first transistors and uh, diodes and stuff in the top corner that I mentioned I would come back to. Yeah, so that's one of the uh, the diodes. It's only a two terminal device. I'm trying to get it a bit more stable, and then. One of the uh, the transistors in the upper corner. So that's that's pr most certainly a, uh, probably a bipolar transistor, potentially a FET, but I'm gonna guess by bipolar transistor. Kind of looks like a kind of looks like a dog almost. 
Maybe that's just me. But uh, yeah, um, I think uh, I think this just about just about covers it. So uh, yeah, I mean, if you have a an amplifier, uh, like a home theater receiver or something from you know maybe the '90s, early 2000s, or um, you know whatever, even even if you buy something uh, now, it's it's very possible if it's not class D that it's probably got a module kind of like this in it so uh yeah this is uh this is interesting i don't i mean it's pretty but i don't really uh i can't really tell you uh very much about this because i'm not an analog uh circuit design guy So anyway, hopefully, uh, hopefully this was interesting. Thanks for watching.